Good morning. It is Sunday, July the 11th, and we are definitely a week closer to finally putting COVID-19 behind us. I want to give you a quick update on where we stand, and what I want to do today is try and give you a better idea of what we can expect in the coming three weeks or so. Uh, if you watch the news at all, if you follow the numbers at all, I don't really need to spend a whole lot of time on this because all of the news is telling us the same thing, basically, and that is the numbers across the board are not encouraging at the moment. Whether you look at the global, national, regional, state, or local levels, the numbers of new cases are significantly up. The numbers of deaths are up. Uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples. On a global scale, and again, every time I give you these numbers, what we're uh, referencing are the uh, seven-day rolling averages. So it's always the, the average for the previous seven days. So a week ago, that seven-day average for uh, the number of new cases globally was 185,000 new cases per day. That's climbed to uh, this past week, where today the average for the last seven days is 209,000 cases. Uh, in terms of numbers of the United States, a week ago we were looking at 48,500 cases, new cases per day. As of today, that has climbed to 60,000 new cases per day. Now the, uh, and and that, that trickles on down to the state and uh, local levels. We're just continuing to see a significant increase. In spite of that, there's still a lot of divide, there's still a lot of confusion, people who are saying, well, yeah, the, the numbers may be up, but the numbers are inflated because of all of these different reasons, and it's the death count is what really counts, and uh, that's the, the number that tells us that this thing's really going away, and it's not that big of a problem. And I want to just do what I can to clear that up for you, because the truth of the matter is, the death count did create some confusion for people, but the death count is telling a true story for us. A quick rewind to remind you of what we've observed with the numbers. When we went into a lockdown mode and we began to practice social distancing, we got the numbers not only to stabilize but to go down. And we went through a span of five weeks. It started Mother's Day weekend and lasted until mid-June. For five solid weeks, we saw the numbers stay very stable at about 22 to 23,000 new cases per day. In mid-June, that number began to, to increase on a weekly basis. The third week of June, we saw an increase from uh, just under 23,000 new cases per day to 27,000 new cases per day. That's an increase of 21%. That's an important number to remember because that week of new cases is what correlates to the death numbers for this past week because there's always about a three-week lag. We saw a 21% 20, um, increase. The fourth week in June, we saw a 38% increase from 27,000 new cases per day to 37,000 new cases per day. The following week, that jumped up to 48,500 new cases per day. And this past week, that's jumped to 60,000 new cases per day. Now, the thing that confused people about the death numbers is there should have been, a, you would think, a five-week window where the death numbers bottomed out and stayed stable for about five weeks, but they didn't the death numbers continued to go down almost on a consistent basis. There was one little hiccup in that that's pretty easy to understand and explain, but the numbers continued to decline instead of staying stable when you looked tracking three weeks behind for the death numbers. The reason for that primarily is because the older third of the population was taking this very seriously, masking, social distancing, taking the steps necessary to avoid being in public, and so the average age of the people who were getting this disease dropped like a rock, anywhere from 10 to 20 years shift downward in terms of the average age of the people who got sick with this disease. And that changes the death numbers. And so we continue to see the death numbers go down until they bottomed out a couple of weeks ago. And now it appears that the numbers actually reflect what's happening in the culture in terms of, yes, more younger people have the disease and it's much more survivable for them. But now that those numbers seem to have balanced themselves out, here's what we've seen. The numbers that we reported a week ago for the prior seven days, when you know that there's a three-week lag between when numbers are reported for the disease and when deaths are reported as a result of that week, there's always a, a three-week difference. Well, the numbers that we reported to you last Sunday correlated to the second week of June. That is the final week of that five-week span where the numbers had stayed really stable in terms of new cases. That's where the death numbers bottomed out. They bottomed out at 595 deaths per day. But here's the significant thing. The third week in June is when the numbers began to move upward. The third week of June, we saw a 21% increase in new cases. That's the first time in six weeks we had seen a real increase. And that week correlates to this past week in terms of our death numbers for the past week in terms of that three-week lag. Guess what the death numbers did for this past week? 
they went up 22%. There's the correlation. 21% increase in numbers three weeks before, 22% increase in deaths. I think what we're going to be able to expect is that we'll see those numbers for the past three weeks track forward now three weeks. If that's the case, here's what you can expect for the coming three weeks. The following week, the fourth week of June, was a 38% increase in cases from 27,000 to 37,000. That should correlate this coming week to an increase of 38% in deaths, which would mean that the death number, which today is an average of 726 per day, will go up to about 1,000 per day as of next Sunday. Two weeks from today, it should have gone up another 31%, which means the new number is going to be just over 1,300. And three weeks from today, the number should have gone up an additional 24%, which means the new number would be right around 1,600 deaths per day. We can't project beyond that because there's only a three-week lag, but the numbers continue to climb, which means by four weeks from today, COVID-19 will have once again most likely become the number one killer in America over cancer and heart disease and everything else once it climbs above 1,700 deaths per day. I would love for those numbers to be wrong. I would be thrilled to be wrong about that. And it is possible that as the younger population continue to be the larger numbers of people who are getting the disease, that it might dumb these numbers down a bit. But you know, I'm willing to go on record as saying, expect the numbers to continue to go up. Expect them to line up with what we've seen just lagging three weeks behind. And if they do, you can expect in the next three weeks that the averages will be 1,000, 1,300, and 1,600 deaths per day. I would love for that not to be the case. But the bottom line is, barring a miracle, the numbers are going to continue to climb. Now, I know many of you, like me, are frustrated by how people have become so divided. And there's just such a, a tension between people who believe that this is a problem and people who believe that it's a hoax people who believe it's important to wear masks and social distance and others who say that's just robbing us of our rights and this is all foolishness. Don't let that become your primary focus. The bottom line is at this point there are a lot of people who aren't taking precautions that you're not going to convince them to by anything that you say and I would just suggest don't waste a lot of breath doing that at this point. The disease itself is going to make the point. Unfortunately, that's just going to be what happens. For many people, they won't change their behavior until it's their mom, their dad, their loved one that's sick or dying. And that will, unfortunately, be what changes uh, behavior when that happens. What you and I need to do is make sure that we don't panic, that we realize we are going to get through this, but that we take proper steps and take into account what we need to do to have healthy boundaries. That includes, obviously, doing the things that we know to do. Social distancing, wearing masks, frequent hand washing, and not going out into public places any more than we absolutely have to. Those four things will go a long way towards keeping us safe. But here's the big thing that you have to add to that, especially if you're a part of the at-risk population, the, the senior adults or those who have underlying conditions. You especially have to guard yourself against your own loved ones. For the next 6 to 12 months, you're going to have to set boundaries that are your boundaries. And you're going to have to be proactive so that you know before you get close up face to face somebody who's without a mask, letting them into your home, you going into their home, where you're going to need to know, are you being careful to protect yourself when you're out in public? Are you doing the things that you need to be doing? And if not, no matter who it is, it may be your child, it may be your grandchildren, that you're going to have to set some healthy boundaries. Because the stories I'm hearing again and again right now, it's people's own family members. It's typically their children who are exposing them to the disease. They go out, they're in unprotected environments, and then they bring it right back home, and suddenly everybody's needing to be tested. The thing that we've got to do is be wise. Quit worrying about what the government says. You do what you need to do to stay safe. Don't be panicky. Don't lose heart. God's faithful. He's going to see us through this. But we've got to do our part. He'll be faithful to do his part. But let's each do what we can which means practicing social distancing, good hygiene, wearing masks, don't be out in public more than we have to. And in a short enough span of time, we'll just be telling stories about what it was like to go through a pandemic. I'm Mark Price reminding you to stay safe, to stay in touch, and always remember that you are loved.